A 53-year-old woman once came to me with terrible depression and insomnia and had failed multiple SSRIs and antidepressants. Three weeks later, she was feeling better than ever before, and it wasn't by adjusting antidepressants. It was by replacing one key hormone that no other doctor had ever asked her about, progesterone. I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, and here are five symptoms of low progesterone that most patients and their doctors overlook and miss and I don't want you to be one of those women. In just a few minutes, you're going to know more about this hormone than most women and doctors and how it affects your body, both psychologically and physically. We'll first talk about what progesterone is and what it does, why its levels fluctuate and the symptoms it causes, and how replacement can be tricky but safe and effective in most women. Progesterone is one of the key reproductive hormones in women and to a much lesser extent in men. Progesterone is different than estrogen, the other critical female reproductive hormone, but progesterone and estrogen do work synergistically together. Like all reproductive hormones, progesterone is derived from cholesterol. The conversions happen primarily in your ovaries and to a lesser extent in your adrenal glands, sitting just above your kidneys. In pregnancy, the placenta also produces progesterone. And what's wild and most doctors don't know is that your nervous system also produces little bits of progesterone, and you'll understand why in just a second. Here are the wide-ranging effects that progesterone has in your body. In your bones, progesterone promotes bone formation through a process that's called osteoblast differentiation. And it works synergistically with estrogen to build strong bones and maintain them through a lifetime to minimize the risks of osteoporosis. In your blood vessels, progesterone protects the critical cells lining the vessel walls called endothelial cells, likely preventing the start of atherosclerosis. This is key to your cardiovascular health, especially as you age and those delicate cells become dysregulated. In your nervous system, progesterone has key neuromodulatory and neuroprotective effects, modulating mood and cognition, and possibly even reducing the risk of some neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, and possibly even amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, and Parkinson's disease. But this is still an area of active research. Remember I told you your nervous system also produces little bits of progesterone? We believe it's because progesterone is also a neurosteroid, meaning it's anti-inflammatory to your nerves and neurons, which may explain why research appears so promising for this hormone. Energy levels in your body are also modulated by progesterone, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. And in your immune system, just like in your nervous system, progesterone has immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory properties. This is key during pregnancy, where immune tolerance is critical to supporting the baby. After all, that baby has genetic information from the father and you don't want your immune system to be attacking it as an invader. And lastly, in the reproductive system, progesterone is critical. It regulates the menstrual cycle, prepares for and maintains pregnancy, and is vital for preventing endometrial cancer. Now that you know what progesterone does in the body, and it's a lot, you can guess what symptoms of low progesterone look like in most women. See if you can spot an important trend. First, low progesterone can cause breast tenderness, irregular periods, increased appetite, and unexplainable aches and pains. Low progesterone also increases the risk of osteoporosis, which we see in postmenopausal women. Low progesterone also increases the risk of heart disease, which we also see in postmenopausal women. In the nervous system, low progesterone may increase the risk of depression, anxiety, irritability, sleep disruption, and cognitive changes, like what we see in women going through menopause. There may also be effects on cognition, like Alzheimer's disease specifically. But this is also an area of active research because there are conflicting viewpoints. I think it's largely due to slight genetic variations between women. And we do consider progesterone overall to be neuroprotective and when it's deficient can lead to all sorts of potential neurologic complications. Hormonal fluctuations with progesterone also contribute to fatigue in older and younger women. And in the immune system, low progesterone may lead to increased inflammation, contributing to autoimmune conditions or increased susceptibility to infections. I'm sure you caught the trend. Many of the conditions and diseases of aging may mirror the decrease of progesterone in a woman's life. Bone, heart, brain, and immune system dysfunction all get worse as we get older. And progesterone levels definitely decrease along the same pattern. In men, the role of progesterone is not as clear because of the balancing with testosterone, but women don't have the same gradual decline. They have a steep decline, kind of like a castration, once they go through menopause. So I don't
don't believe that menopause and progesterone levels coming down are just associated with many of these conditions, I believe they're causally related. And unfortunately, it's not just menopause that wreaks havoc in women's progesterone levels. That dysregulation can even happen in younger women. Look, it's unfortunate, but in the modern day, your hormonal system is under attack from the inside and outside. First, there are environmental toxins, what are called endocrine disruptors. Plastics are a big one, but there are thousands of others. They can not only interfere with ovarian progesterone production and signaling, but can also cause chronic inflammation and progesterone resistance. Progesterone resistance is nasty because it prevents your body's natural progesterone from being able to act on its receptors. Progesterone resistance is somewhat controversial and can be difficult to overcome in women. Next are metabolic conditions that can dysregulate progesterone signaling. These are things like obesity, inflammatory bowel disease, or leaky gut. These are associated with ovarian inflammation and reduced progesterone production. And then there's stress, whether emotional, social, illness-related, or even financial. These can all disrupt normal ovarian function and lead to decreased progesterone levels. So can high physical workloads and eating disorders. And even more curious are childhood and developmental conditions, like food insecurity and poor sanitation as a kid. These are linked with lower progesterone levels in the adult and also can delay reproductive maturity. It's kind of crazy, but these early life factors can have long term effects on ovarian function and hormone profiles. Lastly, genetic factors can also influence progesterone signaling and progesterone resistance. But each of these causes of disrupted progesterone signaling provides an opportunity to study what happens if you replace progesterone naturally. That way, you can test to see if the progesterone is just associated or if it's causally linked to the specific condition, especially with mood symptoms and sleep. Have you or a loved one ever experienced hormone changes that have affected your your body or mind? Let me know your experience in the comments below so others can learn from your experience. And if you're learning something new, be sure to check out my clinic's website linked below to learn more about my approach to naturally rebalancing hormones. And be sure to hit that like button too. Moving on. If progesterone was causing these problems associated with aging, inflammation, and toxins, then you would expect rebalancing progesterone to fix the problem, right? Unfortunately, there is a lot of nuance in how to rebalance progesterone in women. Fortunately, the data is overall very positive, especially when using bioidentical progesterone, which is identical to the molecule that your ovaries naturally make. And this is different than synthetic progesterone, what we call progestins, which are used in birth control medications and some older forms of hormone replacement therapy. For example, we know that ovarian hormone production absolutely impacts mood, often helping maintain it during stressful times. But birth control appears to have the opposite association, meaning it's associated with worsening depression, at least in some studies. A deeper look suggests that natural progesterone is simply different than synthetic progesterone, and that natural progesterone appears to help your mood rather than hurt it the way that at least some synthetic versions do. This is probably because of the somewhat unnatural effects that synthetic hormones have on the ovaries and the brain, confusing it about what the actual levels of normal hormones are in the body, which can lead to dysfunctional hormone signaling from the pituitary down to the ovaries. And this is supported by some data that shows that natural progesterone replacement can modestly relieve depression symptoms. And more importantly, that replacing hormones during the menopausal transition can reduce the risk of developing depressive symptoms. And as an added bonus, natural progesterone therapy, especially when taken orally, can actually help improve improve sleep often with far fewer side effects than typical Z drugs. Just look at this meta-analysis synthesizing multiple studies showing overall benefit to women. To appreciate how important this is for folks going through menopause, check out my video linked below about the dangers of many sleep aids. Natural progesterone simply doesn't share those same risks. But remember, I told you progesterone replacement isn't always easy. It can be tricky. For reasons we don't fully understand, some women have paradoxical reactions, even to natural progesterone, meaning they may actually develop worse mood. We call this a paradoxical effect because it produces the opposite effect to what we were expecting. It's confusing, but it doesn't always mean that progesterone is the problem. It might be how progesterone enters the body. 
For example, in some patients, I'll transition them from a topical progesterone to an oral form of progesterone. This is because how the progesterone enters your body determines how it gets metabolized and how those metabolites interact with your brain and the rest of your body. Oral progesterone is different than vaginal suppositories and topical creams. And these all have to be taken into account, especially in women with nervous symptoms like tension, mood swings, irritability, anxiety, and feelings of lack of control. To add more complexity, you also need to balance the rest of your hormones if you want progesterone to act optimally. I believe this is one big reason for why there's so much variability in mood and energy in women who are given progesterone replacement. So in summary, progesterone is a critical molecule for your psychological and physical health. And many internal and external factors can dysregulate your progesterone signaling, even in young women and older women. Aging and menopause are big ones, but so are other factors like environmental toxins and physical and emotional stressors. In fact, I describe aging as inflammatory to my patients for this reason, because the aging process takes a tool on the body and it's reflected through the fluctuations and ultimate decline in progesterone levels. And now you understand that replacing progesterone has many nuances, like synthetic versus natural, oral versus topical, and it depends on how you're balancing the other hormones in your body, from cortisol to your thyroid. And there are some folks who do better with cycled progesterone and some folks who take it every day of the week. To learn more about my approach to naturally balancing hormones, visit my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com. And if you learned something new, share what you've learned with loved ones and hit the like button and subscribe to keep up with all of my medical content. And if you wanna learn more about your hormones and mental health, be sure to check out this video here. Remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told. After all, replacing hormones is not optional, but often life-saving.